Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today we have another Friday faves, not so much fails. I did mention in the middle of last month that I was bringing these back in May. Um, if you guys enjoy them, if you watch them, I will continue them for the rest of the year because I so missed them. I started this last year and it was basically just like a weekly roundup of bits and pieces that I wanted to talk about. Some weeks there'd be loads of stuff, some weeks there'd be hardly any. I have a very few things that I just kind of want to highlight this week that I'm really, really enjoying. Um, and it's just so that I don't forget stuff because sometimes I'll I'll find something and I'm like, oh, this is really, really great. And then the week after I find something else that I use instead. It doesn't mean that that thing wasn't fantastic, but I forget to mention it if it was like the beginning of the month and I have to wait till the end. So I really enjoy these Friday roundups. Um, so let me know how you feel about them, but you're kind of gonna vote with your view. Let's kick off with a hair tool. Very unusual for me. I'm not someone that usually styles her hair, but I, a couple of months ago, got some curling, what are they called? Curling one, curling cur rollers. I got some rollers. Um, I actually got them secondhand, but I think they were brand new. I got them from the charity shop and uh, I kind of started playing around with curling my hair a little bit more. They they worked, but they were too heavy and too big for really what I wanted, and there weren't enough of them for my hair. So I wanted a really big barreled curling tongue, and I asked for a request. I asked for recommendations on Instagram and uh, looked for reviews online, and all of the ones that people said were great were so expensive. And this is for someone who's not using this on a daily basis. Like, I'm, I'm not curling my hair every day. This is not... I don't want to pay £150 for curling tongs. I mean, like, for a hairdryer, I'll pay a bit of money. Um, if I was straightening my hair every day, okay. But I'm not really um, going to curl my hair. I'm not really any kind of heat style. I'm not. I'm just not. Um, so I think it's it's all kind of down to the individual. I understand some people think the Dyson Air app is, like, you know, the most amazing thing in the world. I'm sure it is. I'm never going to pay that kind of money. If they sent me one, I would review it on the basis that I would never in a million years, I don't care how fantastic it was, I wouldn't pay that money for a Dyson Air app. Um, so I was looking for something that was affordable um, because I thought, well, like, if, you know, what if I use it a couple of times and I'm like, eh, do I want to spend £150? No. So I found this on Amazon um, and I think it was 20 20 something, less, definitely under 30. Uh, it is from Tony and Guy, I will link it for you below. Flipping fantastic. I've had it for a week and I've curled my hair more than I ever thought I would <laughs> in that time. I have pretty much curled my hair every day. Um, I've been using it to pin curl my hair and do like big voluminous curls. I've just been kind of like tonguing it a little bit. Um, my curls are staying in a load longer than usual. I mean, I have just had my hair cut. So that's part of it because it's like shorter than it used to be. But like if I curl my hair one day, I also blast it with dry shampoo before I even begin. Um, but if I curl my hair one day, then the next day I can kind of just touch it up a little bit. It's not all tangling, knotted up like it used to be. My favourite to this point was always the Cloud9 Conical Wand, which I, I like that. My problem was, um, and it's fantastic if you've got long hair, um, the curls weren't really the, the curls I was looking for. I wanted like a larger curl and I wanted something that maybe I could tongue the midsections of my hair or just like play around with it. There's not a lot you can do with a conical wand because that you, you're going to get like a tapered curl. Um, and that was fine but sometimes I wanted to like curl the top sections of my hair. Difficult to do. So this has been great. Like I said I'll link it below and it was really really affordable. Speaking of affordable I mean everything is but um, my friend Charles, Ginger Girl says on Instagram, she told me I needed to try this. She'd seen loads of stuff on I don't, TikTok. TikTok would be the ultimate time suck for me. I did have TikTok for about a month and um, one day I got in the bath and I looked at my phone. I tend to put something on um, and put my phone on the bath just to watch something, you know, vampire diaries, whatever, uh, while I'm having a bath. And I, I picked up my phone, um, obviously intending on putting something on. I got sucked into TikTok and I looked up and it was dark. I have absolutely no idea how long I'd been looking at TikTok, but I was just sitting in the bath on t it just like, and then I had to delete the app. I, that was enough for me. So she keeps me abreast of these TikTok beauty trends and she told me, you have to try this. I finally found it. I'm really enjoying it. It's the collection Gorgeous Glow Filter Finish Complexion, Complexion Boosting Primer and Illuminator. It's supposed to be, um, I forget what the, 
the product is from Charlotte Tilbury because again, too expensive for me. Charlotte Tilbury, it's not even just too expensive. I just think the stuff is really basic. For the price, I don't understand. I don't understand. I think if you're gonna spend that kind of money, go to Bobbi Brown. Bobbi Brown is like so, like real skincare based stuff. Um, I found things from there that have just been, it feels like it's worth the money. Even Estee Lauder, I don't understand. Charlotte Tilbury, I think, has just become like a trendy thing. It's kind of like NARS. NARS have got some really great products, don't get me wrong, but I think they have aired more on the side of trendy. I would definitely say I've had more misses from them than, say, Bobbi Brown or Estee Lauder. Anyway, we're off track. Can't remember what the product is that they're duping, but you'll know, you know. It, they've got one of those products that everybody loves, um, and it basically is just like an illuminator that you put on before anything else so it's like 35 pounds or whatever it is and then you still have to have another 35 pound foundation on top <laughs> so this is something in the region of five um i will again link it below i forget exactly the price but what i've been using this as i'll either put it on underneath my foundation if i remember or just on top i've got it on today this is the only illuminator i've got on just kind of as a liquid illuminator if that's what you're using this for it's going to last you for a million trillion years because this is a massive amount. Um, also, it's not a lot of colour, so it's worth noting that if you are looking and you can't find the exact shade that you want, because it is obviously a primer, you're supposed to put it all over your face, um, but there's not a tremendous amount of colour to it. There are much deeper ones that do have some colour, but you know, if you were looking for kind of like um, a bronzy colour, or if your skin is much deeper and you can only find the lighter shade, um, it is still just like a, a very sheer liquid illuminator, so just test it on the back of your hand. You might be able to go with the one that they've got in stock because this has been mega, mega popular and you might not be able to find exactly what you're looking for. Um, Hydro Luminous, I don't know if I've mentioned this. I must have mentioned it before, but definitely not recently. I put it on today. I was doing a live on my vlog channel while I was getting ready and just kind of chit-chatting. And I put this on and thought, I have to mention this because... I use this all the time now and I'm going to repurchase this because I've just been so, so enjoying it. It's, it's called Hydroluminous Moisturising Foundation, Visibly Fresh and Radiant Skin, and that's exactly what it is. Medium coverage. I put on my SPF, which I use the L'Oreal, um, I think it's Revitalif SPF 50, so it is a two-in-one. You know how some people feel about it, but from my perspective, the, the best SPF is the one that I'm actually going to wear every day. So yes, okay, it's part of a moisturiser. But that's better than me thinking, well, I don't want to wear an SPF or not being able to find one that goes underneath my makeup. This works really, really well. I put that on, leave it for a few minutes to absorb. But before it's completely 100%, I put this on, blend it all out with my fingers and I get a very light foundation, a really nice coverage. It always looks very, very natural. And then on top of that, if I need any extra coverage, today I've got a little bit of extra um, concealer on. But as a day-to-day -day foundation, I could easily wear this build it up a tiny amount, get it to a medium coverage and not wear anything else on top of it. Really love this stuff. It looks natural, it feels great on the skin. It never like breaks up, doesn't make me feel or look any oilier than I usually do and um, doesn't settle or any of that. Doesn't settle, doesn't kind of fall into all that dryness and exaggerate anything. It's just one of my absolute favourites and definitely my favourite of, of the moment. Um, and I have another number seven product, which is this Hydra Luminous Lip Balm. I didn't even know it was from the same range in caramel. I'm wearing it right now. I was actually talking about this as well on my live. Um, it reminds me of another number seven product that they used to do that was a little bit like Clinique Black Honey that was very, very dark, but it was really sheer when you actually applied it. And I remember putting it on and um, this was my grandma's. I remember putting it on after I'd seen, do you remember the, when they did the um, prequels to Star Wars, they actually released the original films at the cinema, um, like a little bit to eke it out. Before the prequels came out, every few months they put on um, one of the original movies. So I've seen all the original movies at the cinema, like for the, that they were the first time I saw those movies. I went with my dad, he took me and my brother. It was always a big deal when my dad took us to the cinema. Um, we went with my dad to the to the cinema and I've since seen all of the Star Wars movies at the cinema with my dad, which feels really special. But I remember that first, first one and Carrie Fisher had this particular lip and it was kind of, I'm gonna have to find a picture of it because I was talking about it and now I think, 
Am I making this up? I can't find a super clear photo, but she's here. I'll try and remember to actually add this onto the screen so you can see it. Um, what makes me laugh so much is this is obviously, like, this has been going on for a really long time. I was, um, I don't know how old was I, how old was I? They came out in, well, they started coming out in 1999, so I was 13, there or thereabouts. Um, and so this is where, at very least, I know the earliest, earliest possible memory of my TV lip obsession began. 1999. <laughs> I was 13 and I was like, ooh. What is on her lips? Anyway, I digress. Um, so my grandma had this lipstick and uh, it looked super, super dark. I put it on my lips and it was like um, a really sheer, it was it was more so than this, more the Clinique Black Honey because it was like a hard lipstick and you used to rub it and rub it and rub it and then I would get a little bit of colour. Um, and this does remind me of it and the fact that it's from number seven is, is all the better. But if you look at the colour of it in the tube, it looks like, oh no, that's a bit much. But then on the back of my hand, it's really not much at all. And that was a really long-winded story um, about Star Wars, when really I'm just trying to tell you that this lipstick is very comfortable, really hydrate. it is a lip balm, really hydrating, wears away really nicely, and you don't have to be concerned about it looking kind of patchy or strange and touching it up and looking in the mirror to make sure that it's not kind of like all over your face or it's not dried down or left a weird ring around your lips or anything like that. It looks really good all of the time. As it wears away, it looks nice. Um, and we didn't really need to talk about Star Wars, but of course we did. I also want to very briefly mention, because I don't really have anything else makeup-wise to talk about today, um, I want to very briefly mention my um, love for the term coastal grandmother. If you follow me at all in like my house stuff, like my enjoyment of a specific style, um, I like kind of East Coast, Hamptonsy coastal stuff. I uh, really love that. I like I've got the porch swing vibe outside. That is the whole thing I'm going for in my garden and um, in my kind of like kitchen area. Um, or my like kitchen diner area, that's the whole thing. I would like, I just want you to feel like you walked in to a Hamptons home, which is, you know, a little bit of a stretch in Doncaster. But you hear what I'm saying, that's my vibe. Um, coastal grandmother has become a trend online and it is exactly the perfect description. I feel seen, but also not alone because this is a thing, people have, Something's got to give parties where they dress up as Diane Keaton. Um, everyone's obsessed with It's Complicated and Meryl Streep. I feel like I found my community. And if you enjoy the kind of things that I do, you know, like that, that kind of movie, we're talking um, It's Complicated, The Holiday. Uh, I mean, Sleepers in Seattle falls into that genre and so does um, You've Got Mail For Me, but they were actually Nora Ephron. Um, anything Nancy Myers, or well, everything and all things, oh, Father of the Bride, all of those things. If you enjoy the home decor aspects of those things, and just generally the feel, like you wanna be able to step in to those movies and have that life and feel that lifestyle, I think you will enjoy everything Coastal Grandmother and uh, welcome to the community. That's it for this week's Friday Fails. No, that's it for this week's Friday Faves and not so much fails. Um, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. I will be back on Sunday with an ASOS haul. A uh, bit of a strange one because I basically hauled the stuff as I was wearing it. Like, as in, <laughs> that sounds stupid, but I was trying it on as I was actually going to wear it out of the house because I uh, didn't set aside time to actually film a haul. And so instead I thought, right, well, I'm gonna go and do this thing. So I, gotta, I wanna wear those jeans that I bought. So I'll show them now. And then I'll show the t-shirt that I wanna wear tomorrow tomorrow and I actually at this point haven't finished it because I've got some shorts and some other things to try on as well so watch this space maybe it'll be finished by Sunday um, and I also vlog over on Mikhaila Vlogs which will be linked below if you're interested in my day-to-day -day. absolute nonsense completely mundane me sitting in my house and treadmilling at my desk that kind of thing and if you like coffee there's lots of coffee um, otherwise I will see you next time bye